Hello, today I have another Bassius 100 watt power adapter. I think they pump these things out like candy or something. On this one, we see GAN3 or cubed or whatever that means. This is a desktop style power adapter as opposed to the wall warrant style. So we will have to see what's been done different on this updated adapter. In this series, I try to answer the question, which power adapter do I want to get? The videos get technical, so hang on and always ask questions if you don't understand something. The performance is measured and compared to near competitors to see how each one stacks up. If you want to help out the channel, see the links on my webpage or in the description. Patreon is now live as well as a donate button on my website. Not much up there yet, but I said I'd do it if I got to a thousand subscribers, so thanks. The box, as usual for Bassius, gives you tons of information and lots of marketing. On the front of the box, and there have been several questions in the comments on this, we see the GAN3 or Cubed logo. There is a new generation of gallium nitrite chips with something called GANSense, and that could be this, but I don't think that technology is in a product yet. I think this is a normal gallium nitride system, and they just bump the number up for marketing reasons. As usual, opening it up, there's lots of things in the box. This comes with a double plastic wrapped adapter. Eh, at least the rest isn't plastic, but still too much plastic. As usual, Bassius provides the power cable, USB. I have a lot of these now, and they're okay for charging. We get the usual stickers. Oh, a state of confusion. I think that's my permanent state. I think I have enough of these stickers to wallpaper a room now. The user manual, warranty card, and of course, the snake-like power adapter. The user manual has the various ports and how they operate, but again, the web page does a far better job trying to explain these various ports and how they share. I don't see any markings for efficiency, but I do see a very high input current rating, which I don't like, so we'll have to check that out. The amount of different devices this can support is wild. It also claims to support the Samsung 45 watt fast charging protocol. Here is the power adapter. We can see the two USB-C ports and two USB-A ports. It is a fairly large device and quite different than the other 100 watt adapters. This device does have a safety listing for the United States and Canada market through ETL. It has the DOE6 efficiency mark, which we have seen before many times, but hasn't been met by these Bassius 100 watt adapters, so we'll need to check that. The LED seems like it might be a little misaligned here, so maybe some quality issues there. The packaging and accessories weigh 80 grams. The power adapter weighs 305 grams. It's on the heavier side for a 100 watt adapter, but it also has a power cord, so this is in a different class than travel adapters. Once plugged in, the power adapter uses about 0.17 watts of idle power and only 1.6 VA of idle apparent power. These numbers mean it meets the DOE 6 efficiency requirements, which is a nice plus and a major step up from the GAN 2 generations of these power adapters. It looks like Bassius did something. This is a major positive for this adapter because being the desktop variant, it is likely going to be plugged in at all times. With the USB cable plugged in now, we can see on the USB-C port we get 5, 9, 12, 15, and 20 volt power delivery 3.0 modes. These are the fixed output voltages. We also get a 20 volt programmable power supply mode, which is a variable output voltage mode. The device appears to operate as intended when switching between the various ports. All of the USB ports reset when plugging and unplugging things. In the event of an overload condition or on any of the ports, it also resets all the ports. The Bassius does have a fast recovery though, so as soon as the overload condition is removed, the system will renegotiate the power delivery and supply the requisite power again. In my testing, I didn't find this to be a serious problem because of the rapid negotiation. So yes, charging will stop for a second, but then it will start charging again. While doing my tests on this, I actually shorted one of the output wires that wasn't connected to anything, and it didn't act poorly at all. It just turned off completely safely and then recovered perfectly fine. At 10 watts and 5 volts out, the power supply is nice and stable. We see another positive for this device right away. These Bassius power adapters have power factor correction in all the modes. The power factor correction is a technique to consume AC power as efficiently as possible. The higher the power factor, the lower the comparable current, and therefore the lower the loss in wires and transformers that supply your power. So even at 10 watts, we are already at a power factor of 0.71. Excellent for this power level. So even charging your low power devices, you're using the AC power as effectively as you can. All right, so taking this up to 100 watts with 20 volts on the output side, and again, it's not disappointing. 
the 20 volt output is staying within the normal DC voltage range you'd expect for the USB power delivery specification. At 100 watts out, the power factor correction is in place and the power quality numbers look good. When we look at the graph of the power, voltage, and current, we can see all sine waves and all the waves are in phase or on top of each other. This is the best case scenario for AC power. On this power adapter, there is some noise in the waveform, so a little higher THD versus some of the other options out there. But this is the only downside I see and is a very minor one. Here are some examples of how the graph changes for lower power levels. So 75, 50, 25 watts, and 10 watts. As you can see, it starts to get weird looking, but never as bad as the non-power factor corrected conditions. I didn't get the thermal camera out for this one, but as usual with these compact power adapters, under full load, they're going to get a little bit hot on the case after long periods of use. Now it is time to take this power adapter up to overload, which is how much power beyond its output rating before it safely shuts down. Let's see how far I can push it. 102 watts, 104 watts, 106 watts, 107 watts, and 108 watts, and the device tripped off. This is a safe overload threshold. The power adapter does recover to 5 volts once the load is turned off, so this does mean the cable can be left in place. Good for a desktop power adapter. So this power adapter doesn't look too bad. I'm starting to think this might be the new winner, or very close. As you can see, the power factor kicked in early and pushed a lot of the numbers into the green. This is good news. Something we haven't seen on these 100 watt class of power adapters with power factor correction is a reasonable idle power consumption and a low VA as well. This meets the requirements for DOE 6 efficiency class unlike many other adapters in this class. In comparison with other power adapters, this adapter takes second place. The PQS is excellent though. And unlike the other adapters in this range, the idle power is also lower. So that means this power adapter is one of the better choices to leave plugged in the wall all the time. And being a desktop variant, this makes sense. The idle quality does suffer a little though. On the idle graph, it is meeting its own claims for power consumption and the idle quality is okay for an idle state. Again, it does meet the energy efficiency requirements for an idle state for power adapter. On the average power consumption graph, it trends towards the top in terms of average quality. The efficiency is high and the performance is one of the best. Final notes. This power adapter is from a smaller company and they seem to be giving the big names a run for their money. This power adapter shows that the high power quality can be made a priority and excellent idle power performance is also achievable at the same time. This power adapter has power factor correction and it has been used in all modes, so whether charging an old cell phone or a laptop, you get the best power quality possible. For a price point, this power adapter comes in on middle ground for 100 watt adapters, so about 66 US dollars. The PQS of 167 means that this is one of the best performers. The AC power and DC power stay within reasonable limits and the device tolerates overloads safely. We can see the build quality might not be as high, but overall the performance is great. I have heard people may have had issues with quality in the long term with these, so I will keep people posted on how this device does over time. My other Bassius adapters are all still going strong though. I am planning the Apple 35 watt next week, and two weeks is going to be this AOHE roundup from 20 watts to 100 watts. I have a website, there's a calendar on there, check it out. I forgot to apply the sticker. I have many more of these adapters to get through, so many more videos in the future. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.